So this was a very big day, a very revealing day. As you see, their case is totally falling apart. They have nothing on books and records, and even something that should bear very little relationship to the case. Uh, it's just a disaster for the uh, DA, for the Soros back DA. It's a disaster. This whole case is just a disaster. If you read the legal scholars, you'll see, because they're writing about it, they've never seen anything quite like it. And neither have I. I should be out campaigning right now. We're leading in all the polls. I'd like to be campaigning. We'll be leading by a lot more. But I just want to appreciate, I appreciate the job you're doing. It's not easy standing there all day waiting, but you're hearing the same things that we're hearing. Uh, on another matter, as you know, uh, it's Biden's uh, backers that seem to be funding the what's going on with the Palestinians. They're probably not Palestinians. They're uh, agitators. Bad agitators, really bad. And I think our government ought to find out who they are, where they're from, and treat them the same way as they do the J6 hostages. Uh, you got to treat them the same way. These are agitators. They're really hurting our country. It's happening all over the country in cities. You saw what happened last night at the Metropolitan Museum. These are agitators. And in some of the colleges, I think it's about 20% student and 80% others. So this is a big problem, and they better nip it on the bud. And it's a problem from the left, not from the right. This is a problem from the left. And uh, I hope you're going to stress that. Uh, the economy is not doing well. You see inflation is through the roof. They're not going to be able to lower interest rates. If they do, it's purely political. But it'll be very bad if they do from the standpoint of getting rid of inflation. You have to get rid of the inflation. Inflation, as you probably have heard me say, it's a country buster. It busts countries. And it has for a thousand years. You go back and you look at old time Germany, you look at a lot of countries that went through the kind of inflation we're going through, and they're busted. They are just broken up. Broken up in many cases into little pieces. And that's what could actually happen to us. So we have to get inflation under control. We have to get prices down so that people can breathe, people can live, so they can live. But again, this was a very revealing day in court. Any honest reporter would say that. I would recommend you read Jonathan Turley and Andrew McCarthy and Alan Dershowitz, Greg Jarrett, Mark Levin, a very talented people, and others. And others. There's some incredible people out there that are writing about this trial. They're calling it a disgrace. It's a disgrace. In the meantime, I'm stuck. I'm here. Instead of being in Georgia, instead of being in New Hampshire, instead of being in Wisconsin, and all the different states that we wanted to be in, we're not able to be there because we're stuck in this trial, which everyone knows is a hoax. Thank you very much. Thank you. Should there still be a mistrial? Why is the case a disaster? Why is the case a disaster? All right, Mr. Trump, uh, responding to a uh, rather not safe for work day in court uh, where Stormy Daniels uh, was testifying uh, about her rendezvous uh, with Donald Trump. Um, let's bring in CNN's Daniel Dale, uh, who fact checks what we just heard from uh, Donald Trump. Um, he started off criticizing uh, the case, what happened on the case, uh, Daniel, then he turned to protests on college campuses, then he turned to inflation, then back to the case. Uh, what's, what, what caught your notice? The, there was a lot there. Some of it was subjective opinion. I won't try to fact check, but a few things to fact check. Uh, one, he claimed again that he's leading in all the polls. No, he's slightly leading in national polling averages, but he's trailing in a, a good number of polls, especially those that have come out uh, in the last week or so. There are at least a few. Uh, he refers frequently to, to uh, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, the prosecutor behind this case, as a Soros-backed district attorney. Now, I'd say there's some arguable basis for that, but I think it's important to clarify the facts. So Mr. Soros, who's a 
liberal billionaire philanthropist, also a frequent target of anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, did not make any direct contributions to Mr. Bragg's uh, election campaign. He also says he's never spoken once to Mr. Bragg. What did happen was he donated to a liberal PAC that then in turn uh, donated to Mr. Bragg's campaign, as well as other reform-minded prosecutors. So this is at best a one-step remove relationship. And lastly, Jake, I think it's important when uh, Mr. Trump keeps invoking uh, Germany before World War II as an example of what inflation can do to a country. Well, we had March inflation in this country of 3.5 percent, certainly higher than it's been in recent years. But when we talk about, you know, pre-World War II Germany in the 1920s, we're talking about 500, 700 percent. So there's certainly no real comparison between what we have now and what, what Germany had then. All right, Daniel Dale, thanks so much. Uh, let's go pop over to CNN's Caitlin Collins uh, outside the courtroom. Uh, Caitlin, uh, what was your reaction to what we just heard from Mr. Trump? Well, I think he was pleased clearly with how his attorney did the, his attorney, Susan Nicholas, conducted the cross-examination. Now, she's not done yet. We do expect that this will continue on Thursday morning when court resumes. They are off tomorrow, Jake, obviously. But, but Susan Nicholas, just to highlight, was the attorney sitting next to Trump. She was in the first chair, so in direct line of the witness. And she was the one that, when the prosecution was questioning Stormy Daniels, Trump kept tapping her arm and urging her to object. On at least two occasions that I witnessed, Susan Nicholas then did stand up to object. And that was in that really intense period of questioning uh, where Stormy Daniels was going into to incredible amounts of detail regarding her encounter with Donald Trump, her uh, alleged affair with Donald Trump, which he denies. He did not mention Stormy Daniels there. Instead, he just talked about the case in and of itself and the basis of it, really basically what the same people that he quotes every single day. Um, but I do think that says something of the demeanor that he had walking out of court before they had started the cross-examination and then once they had started it, Jake. All right, Caitlin, thank you so much.